everyone, I'm Natalie and you're watching Coins Bank YouTube channel and today is our second episode of series of interviews with industry leaders. If you haven't seen our first episode with Mr. John McCarthy, please check the link below. So let's start. When you hear worldwide cryptocurrency exchange, what do you think? Binance and you are right. Today's guest is Joshua Goodbody, Director, Growth and Institutional Business in Europe and Latin America. Joshua, hi. Hi, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for your time and thanks for being with us. Um, okay, so let me start our conversation with a general question. How is Binance doing? How has lockdown changed the way you manage the team and the way you do business in general? Great question. Um, I think as companies go, we're quite lucky. Binance, since its inception, has been built very much as a, a decentralized company. So everyone works more or less remotely. Um, we have, of course, offices in, in some places where people can get together and meet up and and hang out. But for the most part, we're a decentralized company. So we've been very lucky in that this strange coronavirus period that we're in uh, hasn't really had a material impact on the way that we work. So what we have had the benefit of is, I guess, a couple of years of finding the right systems, finding the right ways to interact with our employees, really leveraging, you know, video conferencing tools, leveraging um, kind of team based collaboration tools. So we've just continued, continued building. And I think one, I guess one big change for the company has been, we haven't seen each other for six or so months and we haven't met up. And, you know, usually we have team get togethers and we have, um, you know, events taking place. We had our third birthday, of course, um, a couple of weeks ago, we would have done all of those celebrations in person. So I guess from a mentality perspective, we've had to slightly shift, the way that we would operate usually and, and we try and encourage people to kind of get together and, and spend some time together. And we love connecting with local communities. So we're doing events usually face to face all the time. So we've had to substitute those for online events. So for us, actually, we've, we've had a quite interesting learning curve in, in organizing large online events, whereas historically we would have done those completely offline. Right. Um, so in that sense, I think there has been a bit of learning for us getting getting to grips with this purely digital uh, online world that we're in right now. I'm really hoping it's not going to be like that forever because we do love, um, you know, connecting with our local communities. Yeah, yeah. Keep everything crossed. Um, connecting with local communities, traveling, seeing, um, seeing kind of the local ecosystems in different countries and regions. But so far, we've we've been pretty lucky. Um, we've just kept kept our heads down, kept building. Our team has kept kind of pushing new products out there, continually iterating on the existing products we have to make them better and better. Um, and actually, we've we've used the period of time as a way of strengthening our our online community. Um, so yeah, it's been a change, but thankfully we've we've been quite lucky to really carry on and, and keep building in the interim. And my second question will be more about in, in, internal information about exchange in general how has lockdown changed the behavior of your users and um, do you have anything any interesting data to share with us in this regard or any exciting updates that are in the pipeline right now yeah great question um, I think lockdown has given people a bit more of their time back um, it's given people uh, a, a moment to pause and have a think about you know do I need to commute to an office every day? Do I need to um, hold all of my assets in stocks and shares? You know, it's given people a pause um, from the hectic day-to-day -day life that we're all usually living and given them the ability to kind of think of the things I can change with this. So we've been fortunate to be able to really kind of interact with, with a lot of new users over this period of time. And from our existing user base, we've seen a massive amount of, of interaction with our products and services. Um, so what we've tried to do is kind of ramp up our, our suite of online products and services um, in, in various areas. We've done that across the board, both in our, our, our spot, uh, spot exchange ecosystem, our futures exchange ecosystem, building ancillary products and services for users like our Binance card that we're rolling out this month to users in Europe. So there are lots of things that we've been building to kind of 
give people things to start playing with and, 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 and interacting with that they haven't maybe previously had the opportunity to play with. One success story for us, I think that's quite clear um, over the past six months or so has been the growth of our, our futures business, our derivatives business, really. Um, we, we launched that at the back end of last year. Um, it's fair to say we were maybe a little bit late to the party versus other, other exchanges. Um, but we've seen our market share grow to just under 35% of the, the entire futures ecosystem. And that coincided nicely with our third birthday. So, so that was a real nice success story for us. Um, we saw altcoins, uh, an area that we're historically quite strong in. Um, our altcoin futures volume grew fourfold. So now we're seeing about $2 billion a day um, in, in altcoin futures. And that was as of, as of mid-July. So we see the appetite you know, to be able to have derivative products um, right. related to altcoins being really clear and present. Um, and following on on that theme, Binance has about 41% of the, the global market share in altcoin derivatives products. So I guess it's given us a bit of an affirmation that there's that market appetite out there for these kind of products and services. So we've built them. We said to users, here they are, uh, you know, do feel free to interact and play with them and trade with them. And we've seen fantastic updates. So we, we just continue building really. So right now we've got about 35 uh, perpetual futures contracts. We've got um, four quarterly futures contracts. We've got four different Binance leverage tokens. We've got three option pairs. So for us, we've really focused on building our derivatives ecosystem. And so far the reception has been really great. So that I think is one area where we didn't anticipate there to be um, as, as, as larger um, an interest in, in these products and services during these times, but really people have found them really useful. Um, on top of that, maybe moving slightly to the more consumer end of our market, we, we've been listening to our ecosystem quite closely. And, you know, on Twitter, people were always saying, when are you going to do a crypto compatible card? When are you going to build a crypto native uh, prepaid or debit card solution? Um, and it's been something that we've been looking at for a long, long time. So um, we officially kind of revealed what the product would look like, how it would feel, what it does at our third birthday. Um, and the interest in that has been massive. It's been huge. So we've had to kind of knuckle down a little bit and get the product out there sooner than we planned um, to, to really meet the market, market demand for that. So it went live for a select uh, set of users in France uh, and Spain uh, this month. We're rolling that out for other Spanish and, and French users throughout the course of this month. And uh, in the course of the summer, we're going to roll it out across the, the European economic area as well. So really, we've seen a massive amount of, of, of appetite and interest in our products and services through lockdown. Um, we were a little bit nervous, I think, that people would be, I guess, preoccupied with what's happening. And of course, the, the global economy is also suffering. And, and, and that's a bit of a perfect storm to create a new scenario where you don't know how people are going to react. Are they going to be more engaged or less engaged with this digital ecosystem that we're building? But we found them to be more engaged than ever. So I think we've been really fortunate in that regard. And, and we see that throughout the ecosystem. People are massively engaged with what's being built. And the great thing is, despite this odd coronavirus period that we're all in, where yeah. we're all living digitally, we can't travel as much, we're building digital solutions. So in that respect, um, I think it is quite, quite nicely you know, chimed with the uh, current atmosphere that we have. We're building products and services that are, that are able to be used um, on a global basis, regardless of what's happening in the global economy or with coronavirus. Yeah, so true, so true. Um, okay, my next question will be about De DeFi is blooming. In your opinion, where does DeFi go next? Is there the potential for the market to crash? What do you think? Uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're so right that DeFi is booming. I mean, we're, we're seeing, I think, just short of $4 billion of assets within DeFi ecosystems. Now, that, that's a massive amount of money, but that is still quite small when you compare that to the overall market cap of the wider crypto ecosystem. But nonetheless, it is blooming. We've seen huge amounts of um, increases in market caps of DeFi projects. We've seen massive amounts of building of, of DeFi solutions. Um, and I think that that is very much a theme that's going to continue for the next year and beyond because people are seeing the inherent benefits that DeFi brings. But one thing I would say is that 
Binance recognizes that there are different market segments. There are different users mm -hmm. want different products and services, right? So your, your average user that really just wants to buy and sell Bitcoin now and then they might want to hold their Bitcoin in a safe place. DeFi might not be for them just yet, maybe in the future, but not just yet. So we're building both sets of products and services and, and Binance I think is, is in a really interesting place in that we, we've been fostering what we call the Binance smart chain. And the Binance smart chain is still in its test net phase right now, but it's going to be moving into, into the main um, mainframe very, very soon. Um, and the Binance smart chain gives us the opportunity to really play a super active role in fostering, um, you know, the DeFi economy. So what we're trying to do is, as I guess the principal contributor to this DeFi chain is, is give people the access to products and services. So a good example of that is we integrated recently with Chainlink Oracles. So in being integrated with Chainlink Oracles, we give our users the ability to have access to, you know, for example, secure node operators, um, off-chain data tools. So it gives people a nice fundamental that they can start building on top of this. So we're heavily invested, you know, from a, from a company perspective and from a time and resource perspective in DeFi. Um, and we think that that is, is, is going to be a trend that's going to continue booming. Um, where exactly it goes, we don't yet know. As with any nascent technology, there will be peaks and troughs, there'll be successes and failures. Um, nascent technology will inevitably have bugs and kinks that need to be discovered. Um, but I think the great thing about DeFi is the transparency that comes with it. You can have you know, ecosystem members, participants, you know, doing self audits of, of your code if you make it transparent and publicly available. You can see activity using on-chain data Mm -hmm. So DeFi, I think, is is something that people are, are, are slowly kind of waking up to the massive transformative power of it, what it can enable, what can be built on it. Mm -hmm. um, and from a Binance perspective, you know, we think that one, we have to kind of lead from the front and, and help foster that economy. Um, but at the same time, we need to support it. And we do that via education. We've just got to put as many educational tools out there to let people understand what this thing is, because DeFi is scary for a lot of people. So with education, we can help demystify it uh, and we can make it a little bit more uh, easy to understand. Um, and, you know, for example, Binance Academy puts a lot of material out there which helps explain the DeFi economy, how uh, decentralized applications work, how the different governance mechanisms work within different common um, DeFi projects. Um, so we're trying to play our part um, and, and it's a very exciting area for, for us and and the general crypto ecosystem as a whole. Okay, great, sounds great. Um, and more predictions from you. Uh, our traditional question, what is your forecast for BDC price at the end of this year? Wow, okay. Um, this is a question I love, but I also hate it at the same time because um, it, always, it always comes back to haunt you, right? So I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna give you a cop-out answer. And that cop-out answer is I'm not gonna give you a price. Why? What am I no, going to say? That? I know. That's, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint, but it always gets used against me every time. And, you know, people will make bets on it. So what I am going to say, though, is that if you look at what's happening right now in the global economy, if you look at how governments are reacting, fiscal stimulus across the board, massive amounts of public debt being accrued, huge um, stimulus packages being injected across all segments of the economy, this kind of um, expansionary policy, this kind of monetary policy is unprecedented, right, in modern times. And there's one thing that we can um, look to, and that's history. And, and when we carry out a, a, as a nation or as a global economy, when these things are carried out, it creates things like inflation. It mm -hmm. creates devaluation of, of currencies. And ultimately, that hits the end consumer. So people are waking up that all the tools that governments are using to fight this, this COVID crisis, this economic crisis, actually will probably end up being to their detriment at some point. So it's kind of woke people up in, in the sense that they're thinking, I'm not so comfortable keeping all of my assets in cash. So I think that combined with what's happening in traditional markets um, and that real disruption that's happening across the board globally is a huge catalyst for Bitcoin. So you're saying um, that it will be growing. I'm saying it's it's. I'm saying the price, from my perspective, will continue to be 
uh, growing from strength to strength because it seems to me like the perfect storm in Bitcoin's favor. Um, and Bitcoin has, you know, it has, a, has a, a supply cap. So as people slowly learn about Bitcoin, the, the genius of the Bitcoin um, ecosystem is that it is inherently anti-inflation. Um, supply is, is getting smaller and smaller day by day. So basic economics would lead us to think that as people start waking up and looking at Bitcoin as an asset they want to get their hands on, maybe there's a price increase that comes with that same time. So not the ideal answer you wanted, but hopefully a positive message that we think that we're going to be bullish. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. And um, we hope that we'll, we'll see you uh, as, a, as a Binance representative at our event in Turkey in September. So um, thanks once again. Thanks for your time and hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Yeah, hope to see you in, uh, in Turkey. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.